In Factorio, you can give a train a list of stations to visit and control what triggers them to leave. Welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio, where I'm going to show you how to get your trains behaving themselves without using any mods. Every train has a schedule which tells it where to go. You can open the schedule by clicking on the locomotive or by clicking on the train in the map view. The schedule will consist of a list of stations with departure conditions for each station. At its simplest, you can tell a train to go to a pickup station, to wait until it's full, and then go to a drop-off station and wait until it's empty. Hit automatic at the top to start it moving and it will work through the stations. Once it reaches the end of the list it will automatically go back to the top. This simple setup is pretty much all you need, the rest of the complexity comes in how you configure your stations. That said, there are a number of other conditions and if you're trying to set up a more complicated system then you might find them useful. Time passed allows you to force a train to wait for a certain amount of time at a station. This could give a production system time to bring materials to the train, or perhaps to have it filled up as much as possible from a station with a slow supply that won't be able to fully satisfy it. Inactivity is very useful as it allows you to part load a train, maybe with a specific amount or to fill up some reserved slots, or to make the train wait until it's completely fuelled. As the name implies, this tells the train to wait until nothing has happened to it for a certain amount of time. Full cargo and empty cargo are pretty self-explanatory. The train will wait until all the wagons are completely full or completely empty. Note that this doesn't include fuel in the locomotive. Item count tells the train to wait for a specified quantity of a specific item. This is essentially a more flexible version of full or empty, allowing you to dispatch the train when the cargo satisfies a condition. Fluid count is exactly the same, but for fluids. A circuit condition allows you to trigger a train to depart based on the circuit network conditions being fed into the station. Personally, I've used this in my space exploration run to trigger trains to leave a spaceship when it arrives on a planet. Passenger present or not present allows you to tell a train to wait in a station until a player gets in or gets out. This is useful when you're using a train to transport your character a long distance and don't want to have to watch the train travelling. It means you can be sure that it won't leave until you're ready for it to. If you set multiple conditions for a single station, you can then choose to have the train wait until all of them are satisfied, or until only one of them is. These can even be nested, so you could make the train wait until there's a player in it, and it's full, or until it has been inactive for 10 seconds. These extra controls definitely have their uses, but for normal logistics trains, you don't actually need them. I mentioned a simple train system earlier, where each train has its own pickup and drop-off station. Early on, when you perhaps have an oil mine and a stone mine, and they each supply separate drop-off stations, this can work quite nicely. You'll have two trains, four stations, and then a shuttle backwards and forwards like this. If you've watched my video on signals, you'll already know how to make sure they play nicely together on the tracks, so this should just work. But, what happens when you start to have more complex needs? Maybe you open a second iron mine, or you want to transport iron plates from your smeltery to both your main bus and to your green circuit area. Well, the easy way to fix that is to have one train go from the Iron Mine 1 to Iron Ore Drop-Off and another train going from Iron Mine 2 to Iron Ore Drop-Off. This means that the trains will go to their separate iron mines but will both deliver their ore to the same station. This will work, however you'll find that unless you're using up the iron ore a lot faster than it's being dug up, at some point you're going to end up with both trains at the iron ore drop-off station at the same time, meaning that one of them will be sticking out of the back onto your main line and potentially causing traffic jams. There are two ways to fix this. One is to ensure there's enough space for the second train to wait while the first one unloads. This could be a simple extension of the line like this. Or if you need more than two trains, you could use a parallel stacker. Note the use of signals in both of these designs to ensure that multiple trains will be allowed into the queuing area. This used to be the only way it could be done, but in version 1.1 the concept of train limits was introduced. This allows you to set how many trains are allowed to be trying to go to a station at once. So if you set this to zero, the station will be disabled. If you set it to one, then only one train will be allowed to go there at a time, meaning that the other train won't leave mine too until the first train has left the drop-off station, like this. If you want to have high throughput, you'll want to have another train ready to enter the station as soon as the current one leaves. So at this point, you design your station with at least a small stacker and set the train limit to the number of trains that will fit in the station in total. So in this case, two. You can do exactly the same thing with supplying multiple stations from a single one as well. 
If you have one station supplying iron plates and two stations requesting them each with their own train, then you can set the train limit to one on the supply station and as long as there's enough supply, the trains will go to the pickup station, fill up quickly and then go off and sit in the drop off station until they're empty, at which point they'll go back for another load. Once again, the loading station should have a limit set to the number of trains that can fit in its stacker, including having one in the station. This system works well, and I used to use it extensively in my megabases before I discovered LTN. However, there is a bit of a downside in that if your supply can't keep up with your demand, then the same couple of stations will tend to get all of the supply runs. This is because Factorio will always prioritise the closest station, rather than working in a round robin. The solution to this, of course, is to add more mines and more smelting to make sure you never have a shortage of supplies. The method I've just been talking about will lead to a large number of trains sitting in drop-off stations, essentially adding their cargo space to the buffer of materials stored by that station. This isn't a, necessarily a problem as such, it does work well, however it feels a bit wasteful both in the number of trains you have to build and in the quantity of resources sitting unused in buffers. Another more satisfying but more complex alternative is to give all of your stations uh, names based on the same pattern, such as iron pickup and iron drop off, and then have a single train supplying each resource. This train would be programmed to travel back and forth between those two station names, but with the right setup this could supply the entire factory with iron. In order to keep this train moving and supplying all the drop-off stations, rather than just parking at the closest one, we need to ensure that the train will only go to a station if there's room to empty its entire inventory there. To do this, link all of the chests in that station to a decider combinator. Given that a normal station has 6 times the capacity of a train, that's 40 stacks per wagon and then 48 stacks per chest with 6 chests along the side of the wagon. You can set the trigger number to anything up to 5 times 40 times the number of wagons on your train times the stack size. However, I find it's often better to keep that a bit lower, perhaps at one train load, to ensure that you don't end up with too much of your resource stockpiled when it might be needed elsewhere. I'll go with one train load, which in this case is 4,000. So I want to say, if iron plates is less than 4,000 in the station, output one green tick. Now connect the output of the combinator to the station, open the station settings and tell it to set the train limit and that it should be equal to the number of green ticks coming in. This means that while the station is empty or nearly empty, the train limit will be set to 1, meaning it's requesting a train. Then once it fills up a bit beyond 4000, the limit will automatically lower to 0, meaning that no more trains will be summoned and the iron train can then go off to supply other stations. We now need to implement exactly the same settings on the other drop-off station so that, that one works in exactly the same way. We should also do the same on the pickup station as well. We can link the chest together and set it to only summon a train if there's more than 4000 iron available. This means if we now build another smeltery so that there are two sources of iron plates, the train will go to the one with enough supply rather than risk turning up to a station that doesn't have enough. We could also add in additional trains carrying the resources with exactly the same schedule and know that they won't fight over any of the stations, whether a pick up or drop off. One other thing to consider with your trains is where to fuel them. You could add an additional instruction to go to a refuelling depot once in each loop, however I feel like this is a waste of time. The trains will be quite capable of doing multiple trips on a single load of fuel anyway. A much better way to do it in my opinion is to have the trains automatically fueled when they get to more central points on your network. So for example, all of your mine trains can be fueled up when they're dropping off at the smeltery. All of the plate delivery trains can also refuel at the smeltery while they're picking up. It can be a bit harder to decide for trains carrying intermediate resources such as circuits, but I find usually having them refuel when they deliver to the bus is quite sufficient. I'll leave you to decide what works best for you, however. Now remember that a fueling system is as simple as one additional station for fuel drop-off, plus a belt that runs through whatever stations are there in that area, fueling up any train that needs it. This fuel can be picked up and transported by a train that works in exactly the same way as every other one. Setting up your trains like this will make them run very nicely and should be more than enough for a vanilla factory. The only things I find I miss from a mod like LTN are prioritisation and round robin. 
As I said earlier, the trains will always take from the nearest station which has sufficient resources available and will take to the nearest station which needs them. The former, the prioritisation, doesn't generally matter unless perhaps you've got an old smeltery that doesn't use modules which you prefer not to use. However, the latter, the lack of round robin, can mean that all of your copper ends up going to, say, your blue circuit production instead of being taken over to red science production. But there, the answer is, as I said, to simply make sure you've got more copper available. But in the short term, it can be a bit frustrating. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps me grow. And maybe check out some of the other tutorials on trains, logistics, circuit conditions and even spaceships. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.